Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Steve Westner. Hey, Steve, how are you? Hey, Ben, how you doing? I'm really, really well. Steve is the CEO and founder of Blue Oceans Global Consulting, but he's not focused so much on the ocean. He's really focused on the automotive sector. Uh, Steve is an automotive business consultant. He's an expert on the future of transportation and on really the reinvention and the reimagining of the automotive industry. And so We'll talk to Steve about what Blue Oceans is, is up to in a second. But before we get there, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Yeah, I, um, I spent almost, I've been in the car business now coming on 36, 37 years. Um, I spent most of that with Ford Motor Company. Uh, I was a senior executive with them. And then when I left Ford, I set up my own company uh, to try and give back and to help a lot of dealers in terms of how to make the transition in the new business reality that a lot of them are facing. That's great. Uh, and I, I tell you, you know, there are, are very few industries right now that can really, we can kind of acutely see how, uh, how they've changed over the last couple of years. Uh, the automotive certainly is, is one of the ones that's dramatically shifted. So tell me about what Blue Oceans is working on with these guys these days. Yeah, right now, I mean, the main thing that I've started to try and get the guys to take a look at is the fact that the business model that they've operated under for the last hundred years is shifting. And the big shifts that are taking place are on two fronts. One is the technological side of things because a lot of technologies now are getting better and more capable. And even tech that we've had for a while is improving and and getting far more capable. Um, And then on the other side is the customer expectations. Um, And a lot of customer expectations have changed um, dramatically. Um, When you start taking a look at the expectations customers have about what you know about them and your ability to customize their experience when they go somewhere has risen dramatically. So again, it's a combination of making sure that they're looking at the required technology so that they can get the best efficiency out of their operations, eliminate a lot of the people errors and routine stuff, and then also looking at the skill sets of the people that they have and how well they interact with the new type of customer and how well they meet those expectations. So that's really what we've been working on. And I kind of put together a seven step roadmap for them to help them sort of walk through that. And it's, um, it's been an interesting transition because I think in a lot of ways, the, the dealers have been very successful the last couple of years. Um, and that does put a big challenge on getting them to realize that guys, this isn't a forever thing like that. You have yeah. to start to look ahead. Well, I mean, I alluded to this before uh, we started today, Steve, but and I, I recently moved to Miami and was trying to purchase a vehicle myself. And I, I didn't get the sense that they had to do a lot of customer service at all right now. <laughs> you know, I, I got the sense that all the aces were in their hand and I had none. They, they basically said, you know, here are the cars we got, you know, that's all we got. Don't ask too many questions, customer, because there's just no inventory right now. But I mean, do you, do you imagine that's going to be shifting? Uh, yeah, I do. Because I think, you know, you went from a 17, 18 million industry down to about a 12 million industry with this close down. And the interesting thing across this whole industry has been that this has affected everybody equally. So, you know, Toyota isn't any better off than Ford, than GM, and everybody's short of these chips that now are absolutely critical to running cars, which in many cases are run by a bunch of mini computers. So those chips are very integral to the vehicles being able to do the things that people expect their cars to be able to do. So everybody, was equally impacted by it. 
And so what you're going to start to see, that there's plenty of demand. The industry's still there. The industry's probably still there at a 15, 16 million level anyways. And the reality is they just don't have enough production to meet that demand. But as this stuff starts to improve, and I would say probably over the next 12 months, it'll start to get significantly better. Um, the manufacturers are going to ramp up production. So that situation that you walked into, you're going to walk in and there's going to be plenty of vehicles to look at. Okay. So then the question becomes, how are you handled? How are you treated? Uh, you know, and that's where I look at sort of the customization when it comes to handling the customers and the technology side of it really becomes, if you look right now, the technology in the cars is amazing. If you look at the technology in the manufacturing facilities, also very amazing. I mean, it's like a spaceship in there. But you walk into your average dealership and the technology is basically what it was 20 years ago. Um, yeah. And in many cases, that technology has to catch up and the ability to work with it has to catch up. So I think you're going to find a very different experience in the future. Yeah, I think you're hitting on something which is kind of the roller coaster ride that we've been on. And it's fascinating because the demand uh, and the excitement about the future is is almost palpable. You know, I have a 17 year old son who, since he was a very small boy, was obsessed with the F 150. He just thinks that's the, I don't know why, you know, we never, we never owned a pickup truck. But he thinks F-150s are just the coolest thing in the world. And I sent him the first video of that lightning. And, the, the, and he, I, he almost, I think he may have even started to tear up a bit. He was so excited about it. And I, and I just, I, I think that this whole electric thing is, it's created such, such an excitement with customers but I don't know where we are. I mean, do you see this happening quickly? Is this, how's this going to shape? I think you're going to start to see things happen quickly because a lot of the battery technology has gotten a lot better. They have much greater range. Um, they're smaller. They take up less room. They last longer. A lot of that technology change that I was talking about has affected uh, electric vehicles and made them much more of a real viable proposition. I think the biggest delay you're going to see in EV is the infrastructure to support it. And what that means is having charging stations pretty much at every gas station and you have, you know, accelerated charging. So it's almost the time it takes you to charge your car is what it would take you to fill up your car. So there's not a, a huge difference. And again, that technology is there. But when you start to take a look at the infrastructure across the country. I mean, there are huge stretches of the country that literally have no charging stations. So you can't drive for 4,000 miles on this thing. So I think that's gonna take the time, but, but I do think that this is gonna happen from a, from a time standpoint relatively quickly. I think you're gonna see in the next 10 years and probably the next four or five, a significant number of electric vehicles coming out like the Lightning, like these other vehicles, um, and, and what you're going to see is, I think, a lot of customers realizing that, you know what, this is pretty cool. You know, I, I can charge this up. I don't have to spend, you know, $4 a gallon on gas. And, you know, so they, they're looking at the cost save, and then they're also looking at the capability of the vehicles. And when you look at an EV vehicle, it's like a light switch. You know, you, you hit the gas, you turn the light on, the light comes on. It doesn't take you 10 minutes to get up to speed. Um, so it's yeah. a very different experience. Plus the, the quiet of it and the ride and handling characteristics, all of those things have been significantly enhanced. So it's not a little, it's not a little golf cart anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, and some of the vehicles are just beautiful and you're absolutely right. I mean, I think that that probably is the decision set with the electric car buyers right now, which is they're, they're looking for those charging stations and where they can get them. And if they're, if it's expanded, that's going to offer tremendous opportunities going forward. But let's go back to the dealership stuff for a second, because, uh, you know, some of the stuff that you were talking about in terms of the reinvention of, of that dealership, you know, give me a sense of as a customer, what my experience might start to evolve to be like. Well, I think first and foremost, the transition between 
the sort of digital experience that you have now where you go on and look for vehicles and stuff, all very, very smooth, okay? And then a lot of times you go to the dealership and the experience there is, is more challenging, shall we say. And I think what, what we're gonna find is that the connectivity and the similarity between those two experiences is gonna be much greater. So mm, got the it. ease with which you get information, the, the ease with which the deal is put together and the fact that a lot of these things, uh, the things that now take a lot of time in the back room are gonna be automated. I mean, that's one of the things I talk to the dealers about. There are all kinds of tasks that you have to do when you're buying a car, the registration, all the stuff that goes to the government, all the stuff that goes to the factory, all of that stuff is repetitive again and again and again. And so stuff like you know robotic process or, uh, automation, RPA, is a, is a technology that simply replicates what somebody does on a computer and it can, it can handle a lot of these mundane repetitive tasks. So when you're looking up credit reference, you're looking up this, you're doing that, all of that is what used to take time and you would be sitting in the showroom twiddling your thumbs wondering why it's taken forever to buy a car. All of that I think will be consolidated down to a much shorter time period. Wow. Um, and then on the service side of things for you, there's gonna be more remote service. There's gonna be more opportunities where you know, and, and I've said this before, when you start getting into automated vehicles, which again, are not that far away, Tesla's already testing them. But I asked somebody, I said, if your car can go get itself repaired, do you, do you really care where it goes? <laughs> do you really care that wow. it has a really nice waiting room there? Do you really care that there's coffee there? <laughs> no, you don't, because no. you're not going. And especially if there's an automated vehicle that can come back so that you've got something in case you need to go somewhere, it's That's a such a good point. So a yeah, it's such a good point. Yeah. I, uh, you know, you think about like things like ghost kitchens today, uh, these big brands and all their business coming from food delivery. Nobody, nobody cares what the restaurant looks like anymore, right? It, it could be, right? it's all coming from a basement, yeah. but you're absolutely right. That's a very, very good point. Well, let me shift gears a little bit here. And, and ask you a little bit about the pandemic that we've been living through. It's been a it's been a challenging moment, certainly personally and professionally for a lot of folks. I'd say that one of the industries that seems to have weathered it extremely well it has been the automotive space. Tell me a little bit about the learnings that are coming out of this. I think the the a lot of the the opportunity, I guess, that comes out of this from the standpoint of the automotive business is that that level set. It's happened to everybody. The big hit that you got from the pandemic was the combination of the chips not being available. So that reduced the inventory out of it. And then the challenges that the dealers had at their dealerships with people getting sick and you're in a situation where, you know, one day you have 15 texts, the next day you only have 10 because five of them got sick. Right. Um, so those kind of things were extremely challenging for the dealerships to get their heads around. But I think the fact that they went through it was sort of a trial by fire, but it trained them and it tested them to get uh, a situation that was unexpected and how do we handle it. So a lot of their ability to handle some of these emergencies has improved significantly. But I think the, the biggest um, change you're going to see in the automotive industry is because you had this chip shortage that was created by the pandemic and this level set for everybody, um, you're going to start to see, um, I think, a very different approach to how business is done. Um, it's really going to be a lot more around customer convenience, much more customer centric. Um, also, the ability to handle data, to handle information and be more um, sort of inclusive with it in the sense that everybody at the store will know you as a customer. Because when you come in to buy a car, when you think of all the information you have to give to buy a car, mm -hmm. it's just like buying a house. So they know everything about you. Right now, the challenge is the internal technologies in some of the stores make transferring it from the department to department a little challenging. I think that's gonna go away. And then I think the 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 just the sheer fact that dealers have gone through something like this which affected them so quickly. In mm -hmm. other words, the idea that 
change can happen to you literally overnight, I think is going to stand them in good stead. Because I think a lot of the technologies that are coming along are going to create changes that in many instances are going to appear like they're overnight. Yeah. Um, because when you look at tech, a lot of it, it evolves in one little place and gets a little bit better and they refine it and they refine it. And once they get it to a scalable version, boom, boom. it goes everywhere. Right. And so if you're in one of those developmental areas, that's great. You'll learn about it ahead of time. If you're not, it's going to seem like it happened overnight and customers are going to look at you and go, what do you mean I can't use that tool? How are the dealers doing with recruiting? I think just like everybody else, the, you know, the, the talent uh, challenge is going to be there. And, and I think going forward, a lot of that is going to be a function of, you know, people will get worried about, oh, computers are going to take my job and everything. That's actually not true, I think. I think what's right. going to take your job is somebody else who is really good at having a computer as their partner, right? as their helper. I like to call it my smart friend. Okay. Yeah. He's over here. He's got a lot of the detail and stuff. And if you look at what's happened, um, for example, with the iPhone, I mean, 10, 12 years ago, it didn't exist. Today, you can't live without it. And, yeah. and you start looking at how that's been sort of brought into the mainstream kind of thinking that everybody has. I think you're going to see the same thing happen. And I, I think it's it's going to present challenges to, to dealers, but at the same time, it's going to present huge opportunities. Yeah, I, I like how you phrase that and I uh, completely agree. The winners certainly over the next five years are going to be the companies that it, find a way to partner their, their talent with machine learning and tools that can enhance the capabilities and the offering. So, I mean, we're, we're in a strange year, this 2022 that we're in now. I'm curious to see how you see this playing out this year, how, how things are going to evolve. Are we going to see uh, lots of cars back in showrooms or what, what, what do you think this year holds for us? I think for this year, it'll be a gradual progression because you still have, you still have shortages of chips. And again, the, the complexity of making those chips is pretty high. It's not something that just anybody can do. So there's that expertise that now has to get expanded out. A lot of manufacturers have started to look to bring that expertise in house for themselves, right. as opposed to have it as a supplier. So I, I think for this year, there's going to be some challenges. You've also got some global events that are going on that, again, hit the supply chain at a time when it's very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to take, in my guess, probably another maybe 12 to 18 months to iron itself out. Um, but eventually it will, and eventually you'll start to get up to speed. But I do think that from a manufacturing standpoint, you don't want to get to a situation where you're suddenly massively overproducing demand relative to the market. So right. I think you're going to see a lot more deliberate action in that regard. And I think a lot of the dealers have started to figure out that, you know what, it's not such a bad thing if I don't have 500 cars sitting on the lot. <laughs> so, you know, I think it'll be a little bit more of a balance. But I also think that from a customer standpoint, there's, there's far more focus and far more emphasis every day, and it's increasing uh, exponentially, that your business has to be customer-centric. That whatever you do, whatever changes you make, in my opinion, there are two groups that you really have to focus on satisfying. The first group is your employees. They have to be smiling, happy. They like the tech. They like this. They understand how it all works. And the other side is the customer. Mm -hmm. And in both cases, whatever you're doing in the store, if you're not focusing on those two groups, so the filter that you run, every change you're going to make through is, are my employees going to be happy? Or are the customers going to be happy? Yeah. If they're not, don't do it and don't spend the money on it. You know. Yeah. And then I think the other big challenge is sort of the integration, a better job of integrating the technology in dealerships. Today, it's a hodgepodge of you know, compartmentalized tech that they've right. kind of picked up over the last 10 years. Well, that's no longer viable, okay? Yeah. People expect it to be smooth. In order to make that experience from the internet to your dealership smooth, 
that technology has to work really well together. And a lot of frustration that your employees experience is because the tech doesn't work in yeah. your store. And so I think that's something they're going to focus on between that and the customer centric side of things is where you're going to see the biggest change. I think in the next 18 months, you'll actually see quite a bit of that coming because the ultimate weapon in this whole thing is 5G. Yeah. When 5G becomes a reality instead of a marketing campaign, which mostly it is today, mm -hmm. when it becomes a reality, you're going to take that tube and you're going to exponentially expand it. So the ability to run things through that are, is going to be substantially greater. Yeah. And you're going to be in a situation where a lot of things that your tech couldn't do before because there wasn't enough bandwidth, yeah, all that's gone. And you start thinking about all those Silicon Valley guys that are thinking up all this whiz bang stuff. Well, guess what? Now you got a tube that's big enough for them to shove it through. It's going to become a reality. Yeah, I hear you. And it sounds to me like there's just opportunity all the way through the whole ecosystem, which is very, very exciting. It, it is uh, time for that to have uh, an evolution and a bit of a revolution to get push it to the, the next phase. And Steve, thank you so much for taking us through all of that. We've been speaking with Steve Westner. He's the CEO and founder at Blue Oceans Global Consulting. He's an automotive business consultant, an expert on the future of transportation, and has been walking us through the, the landscape of today, what companies are focusing, focusing on, and, and where the opportunities for these businesses to improve their experience, to improve their effectiveness are going forward. Steve, if someone wanted to reach you, where can they find you? Well, my, my website is out there, but actually, um, if they just go to LinkedIn, they can look me up um, and they can look up blueoceansglobalconsulting.com. So it's just blueoceansglobalconsulting.com. We'll take them to the website. Uh, on the website is my email and my phone number. Um, they can get a hold of me quite easily that way. Um, I mean, I'm located in Atlanta, but I'm accessible from anywhere. So mm -hmm. uh, I've spent a fair bit of time uh, focusing the last year or so in the Southeast, but you know, the internet's a wonderful thing. You can reach me from anywhere. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, Steve, thanks so much for being on the show today. And we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Cheers. See ya.